Hey friends, I'm Riskit, and in today's video, I want to show you how I went about creating this logo animation using Affinity Designer, Moho Pro, Adobe After Effects, and Ableton Live. Now, first things first, I did not create the artwork for this video. It was created by Sarah Murtas. Sarah creates these beautiful illustrations by doing commissions for people all over the world, and this just so happens to be one of them. You can find her work on Etsy at Moonchild Portraits and also over at Instagram under Drawn by Moonchild. I'll leave a link to both down below in the description. So this particular illustration was actually designed for my sister. My sister has a business called Pearl and Rose that sells scrapbooking and papercraft accessories and items that's really worth checking out. I'll also leave a link to that down below in the description. My sister reached out to Sarah to create an illustration for her that she was going to use as her logo. It's a really sweet illustration that speaks to the whole lighthearted attitude that comes along with scrapbooking and papercraft. It's got a lot of vibrant colors and it's some really cool shading techniques and I think it's really awesome. My sister is starting to get into creating video content, so she asked if I wouldn't mind animating the letters dropping down on strings and maybe making the character wink. I decided to really go above and beyond with this one though and surprise her. If you watch my recent video, I just bought myself Moho Pro and I really wanted to see what I could do with it in bringing this whole thing to life. So I did make the letters drop down, I do make the character wink, and I make everything in that scene move, and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at how I broke the illustration apart using Affinity Designer and filled in a lot of the missing elements, and then imported everything over to Moho and started rigging it up for character animation. Now, due to the amount of content there is to cover here, I've actually decided to split this video up into several parts. So this is going to be part one, and hopefully part two and part three will be out soon. Uh, in those other parts, I want to dive into more advanced topics like facial animation and rigging, as well as how I went about animating and bringing everything together in After Effects, sourcing the sound and samples that I was going to use for the sound effects, and the music and how I compiled all of that inside of Ableton Live. Also, a quick note, I'm really sorry if this video and the others aren't as refined as some videos I've done in the past. I had just shy of 40 hours worth of screen recording for this and I've been trying to get into using DaVinci Resolve for a lot of my video editing lately just to sort of spice things up and along the way I ran into some processing power issues. Uh, turns out speeding things up to 9,000% <laughs> is uh, a little bit trickier to edit. I probably could have made some proxy files or something, but it doesn't matter. Um, it is what it is. You should still be able to see what's going on. But if you do have any questions or something isn't clear to you along the way, definitely leave me a comment down below and maybe I'll see if I can turn that into its own video tutorial at a later date. So that's enough chit chat. Let's dive in and get started on this. All right, so you can see that I've started here in Affinity Photo, and that's simply because I just selected Affinity Photo. Um, I was meant to select Affinity Designer, but fortunately you can open these files um, between either application. So I do jump back over to Affinity Designer eventually. I'm looking at the original artwork here and I realize that I have to pretty much separate every element if I want to make it move independently from the rest of the image. Now I could have simply gone in and redrawn everything, um, like, you know, recreated it completely from scratch, but I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to leave intact as much of the original artist's artwork that I could, simply because I felt like this was their artwork. And my job here is to make that artwork move. So the less recreation that I had to do, the closer it would be to the original piece. So I decided to come in and use the masking tool to help separate a lot of these elements. And then later on, I'd be able to come back in and recreate certain parts that don't exactly exist yet. So here you can see I'm using the quick select tool just to mask out the arm and then using some other selection tools just to sort of clean up that selection a little bit better. And then I simply mask the layer and just refine the edge so that it's not too harsh of a cut. 
And then I just label that layout accordingly and move on to the next piece. So now I'm using the exact same process to mask out the rest of her body and using some of those other masking tools to help clean it up a little bit better. I mask it out and refine it, but here you can see that there are some parts of the body missing. Um, this is simply because there's been other objects in the way of the original illustration. Um, some things are sort of hidden behind other body parts. And this is where I realized that I had to come in and start recreating things. Now, I didn't really want to worry about the rest of the illustration at this stage. I kind of wanted to see just how far I could push myself to animate the main subject of the illustration. And then I was going to come back and animate everything else last. So I'm just quickly masking out her head here. I've jumped over to Affinity Designer to do the rest of this. And now I'm going to recreate some of those missing parts. So this was done simply by just creating um, different shapes and different strokes and making sure that they match the color of the original illustration. Now the original artwork actually has a certain roughness to it. And I suspect that this is just due to the brushes that the original artist used. I have a feeling that they made this artwork in Procreate um, just based off some of their Instagram hashtags. So I'm using Affinity Designer. I don't know what brush they've used. So I kind of scanned through my brush library just to try and pick something that seems like it suited the rest of the illustration. I know that I'm not going to be able to match it exactly, but having really clean lines and clean strokes um, on top of this sort of um, rough, pencil-like artwork, uh, it really stood out to me in a bad way and I felt like it would be too obvious. So just going that little bit of an extra mile and adding a little bit of roughness to my artwork on top of it, um, I felt like that blended the whole thing together a lot more seamlessly. Cool, so now I just had to come in and do that for everything else. So it seems like the original artist kind of liked to use three different shades of color to simulate lighting. So her shadows, midtones, and highlights all sort of live in between these outline shapes that she's got going on. And I'm really glad that it was drawn like this because um, if there had been a different style of shading method, I think it would have been a lot more of a chore to try and match all of this up. But the fact that everything's pretty much got quite a hard edge and there's no real blending going on, that made it a lot easier for me to approach and try and match some of these colors. Once I'd pretty much recreated everything I needed to, I just came in with the selection tool and erased everything I didn't need to see anymore. And now I had a decent cutout for her body shape that I could work with. To me, it made a lot of sense to do this in a vector program like Affinity Designer, um, purely because being able to create all of these additional shapes and highlights and midtones in a vector program sort of offered a lot of flexibility where if I stuff something up and I didn't realize it until halfway through the animation process, um, I could quickly come back and just adjust some of the vector lines and Bezier curves um, to sort of get the effect that I was after. I think if I did this completely in a raster program, there would have been a lot more trial and error to sort of jump back and forth between the two applications. Um, and yeah, that's just one of the other reasons why I love working with vectors so much. Cool, so now I'm just repeating all of this process for the head. Now going into this, I was sort of hoping to separate her ponytail and headband and uh, the main face from the head and use a special warping tool in Moho um, just to make life a little bit easier. I hadn't played around with it at all 
at this point. I'd just seen a, a few video previews. So I thought I'd give it a go. I recreated different parts of the head and basically hid the face completely using the same method that I'd used previously on the other body parts. And then I bring it into Moho just to do a quick test, um, just to prototype things and see how it would turn out if I were to take that route. Cool, so I've brought this into Moho now and I'm just going to try that warping tool. But as of the latest update, uh, which I think is Moho 13.5.2, um, this smart warp feature has just got a couple of other uh, new tools. It works slightly differently, a lot faster, a lot simpler. That didn't exist when I was making this logo animation. I do wonder if I could have gotten away with using this method since that update. Um, but as of this version of Moho that I'm using here, I couldn't pull it off. Uh, it either uh, wasn't possible or more than likely it was just my lack of understanding of the tools and how they work. So what you can see me doing here is basically making a very basic and crooked mesh on top of this head shape, setting up a smart bone and making it so that every time I turn that bone from an upright position to facing left, the head would turn slightly. And I'm just pulling and pushing those points around to sort of simulate that the head is turning. Now it does slightly work, but I think I was going to run into a lot more problems with actually rotating the face on top of this um, and everything else to go with it. So I abandoned this idea in the end and recreated the entire head from scratch in Moho. Now that definitely seems like a lot more work and it really was, but I'm glad that I did it that way because in the end, I'd basically create new vector shapes for every feature of the face and animating those in Moho after creating them in Moho really simplifies the whole process and just makes it a whole lot easier to get animation looking good. So I decided to leave the head for now and come back and work on the other elements in Moho. So that being the card that she's holding in her hand, um, separating her hands and other elements as well, and just recreating um, more of the missing pieces that I needed. Now, I definitely had to have a lot more foresight when going into this. Um, I really needed to try and imagine um, how many pieces of her I wanted moving while I was animating everything. Um, in the end, I pulled it off. At first, I thought I could get away with the hands being connected to the arms, um, but then I actually come in and separate one of the hands as well. just trying to figure out the order of different parts of the scissors to, you know, it, it wasn't too difficult to get my head around it, um, but what, there were definitely certain things I needed to keep in mind. For example, her left arm, which is the one holding the card is slightly hidden behind her chest. And it wasn't until later on that I realized that I would actually have to come in and recreate uh, one side of the breast so that the arm could slide in and out behind it and sort of give that a little bit of an illusion of depth. These are just some of the things that you need to keep in mind when you're breaking up an illustration um, and are planning on animating it later on. So now I've imported uh, a lot of those pieces and aligned them. And now I'm just setting up a basic bone rig. So we've got uh, her pelvis or complete control bone, lower spine, upper spine, and the neck. And then we go out from there and we add bones for the arms. Now when doing this, we've got to play around with bone strength a little bit. You'll see as I'm moving things around here that parts of the body are warping when I move an arm and I want them to stay still. So just playing around with the bone strength as I sort of move different parts. Um, sort of helped me identify what I could and couldn't get away with while doing this. Great. 
So that was looking good so far. Now moving on to the forearm and the hand. Um, they're a little bit disjointed, so to speak, but they're all still parented to each other. Um, so they do behave correctly. You can see as I'm moving her arm around here, everything sort of behaves in a relatively believable way. And then I just come in and do that for the other hand as well. Now I've just made a bone for the head and made sure that it's parented to the neck. And just doing some slight cleanup here with different bone strengths. And I've also set up some basic constraints on some of these bones so that I can't rotate them past certain angles. Um, this sort of limits the amount of control you have over the bone, but uh, it can be helpful to do that so that you don't accidentally push things too far while you're animating them. And at this point, um, everything was basically rigged. You can see a slight problem here when I move one of her arms that the elbow sort of um, becomes disjointed from the rest of the arm. And I do come in and fix that later up with an action. So at this point, I decided to do a little bit of a test animation just to sort of move the body around and see what it would look like uh, once she was moving. And this is what we wound up with. So at this point, I know that I want the circle that surrounds the image to sort of pop up. I don't want her to appear like she's sort of popping into the scene as well and sort of bouncing with everything else that's moving at the time. Um, so she's sort of flicking back here a little bit. And at, at the moment, I was really happy with this test animation. It was basically turning out how I had envisioned it. Um, there was just a lot more cleanup and work to go. So here you can see me coming in and setting up an action on this bone. So what is an action? An action is basically something you can set up that tells Moho when you bend a bone a certain way, this happens. Uh, kind of like, you know, a little bit of an animation if statement. So that's going to be it for this video today, folks. I really hope that you got something out of this. In the next video, I'm going to be redesigning the head completely within Moho and then rigging it up with some controls so that we can go about doing some facial animation. Remember to hit the like if you like, and if you don't, tell me why. Please subscribe and feel free to leave any comments or questions you have down below in the comment section. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one.